And to discuss more, we're being joined by Dr. Malcolm Davis. He is a senior analyst in defense strategy and capability at Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Thank you so much for taking out your time and joining us on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Now, one year on, the strikes are not stopping in Gaza. People are still forced to move in Gaza, and the latest from Nusirat camp and Jabalia, where Israel says that Hamas militants are still stationed. And, of course, the ceasefire and the hostage deal is no more. It is still hanging. The Lebanon escalation has even made it even more bleak. With the Hamas chief eliminated, what is Israel now aiming for? Look, Israel is uh, facing war on multiple fronts. Uh, obviously, October the 7th saw the initial Hamas attack on Israel that started this crisis, led to the deaths of over 1,200 Israelis and the capture of large numbers of Israelis as hostages. Israel has retaliated against that to try and destroy Hamas uh, as, a, as a threat. Uh, that includes a destruction of their military capabilities and elim elimination of their leadership. Um, at the same time, it now on October the 8th, the day after that attack, um, Hezbollah in Lebanon opened up missile attacks on Israel. So now Israel is responding to that threat, and it also faces a threat from Iran. So there's a three-front war occurring at the moment where Israel is fighting for its survival, uh, but at the same time, uh, that fight is costing a lot of civilian casualties uh, on all fronts. So this is a really difficult situation uh, for the Israelis and for the region. And that also being said, the hostage deal seems to be nowhere in sight. But now marking one year, protesters are still protesting, hoping that that could at least be coming ahead. The people will be talking about it. What does it mean for the people of Israel who are waiting for their people, for their family to come back? Look, it's a challenging one because obviously everyone wants those hostages released. Um, but there's no guarantee that if Israel gives Hamas everything it wants, that those hostages will be released, or at least will be released unharmed. Uh, you know, there's a high likelihood that, that some of the hostages have been killed by Hamas. Uh, and so going on the streets, protesting, demanding the Israeli government basically accept a ceasefire and give Hamas what it wants in return for the hostages doesn't seem to necessarily align with the, the military and strategic reality that Hamas uh, basically has created. It's a real problem for the Israeli government because they can't ignore the voices on the street, but at the same time, mm -hmm. they can't be forced into a situation whereby they give Hamas an advantage and get little in return. Right. And Prime Minister Netanyahu, he has said that he will go on with his operations with or without Western powers. He said that, of course, this comes after Macron, President Macron halted arms supplies to Israel. But how do you think, how far do you think U.S. will go to support Israel? What do you say on that? Certainly, certainly I mean, sort of the U.S. will defend Israel in terms of countering Iranian missile threats against Israel. We've seen that just recently and also in the attack in April. And I think that uh, if there are further Iranian missile attacks, which are quite quite likely, then you will see U.S. naval forces in the region defending Israel against those missile threats. I think where the Biden administration has made clear that they will not support Israel is if Israel attacks Iran's nuclear weapon sites. It's, it's Iran has ambitions towards acquiring nuclear weapons. There's some suggestions that they're within one to two weeks of having sufficient missile material to have a nuclear weapon and potentially months away from having a stockpile of nuclear weapons that could be delivered. So, you know, Israel has a great incentive to attack those nuclear facilities, but the U.S. is indicating that it won't necessarily support attacks on those nuclear facilities, which is a real challenge for Israel, because the longer they wait, the greater the risk is that Iran will get the bomb. And that would fundamentally change the strategic mm. dynamics in the region. Exactly. That's what I was coming at. Now, how much time does Israel has? How long can they hold the fronts? As you mentioned, it's multiple front and it is Lebanon, Iran, as well as Hamas. How long can Israel stay uh, put that hold on? They have to keep holding on because ultimately what they're doing is fighting for their survival. When you look at the uh, uh, the uh, the aims of groups like Hezbollah and Hamas and also of Iran, uh, the aims are the destruction of Israel, uh, the elimination of the Israeli state, 
and potentially the elimination of the Jewish people. So they're literally fighting for their survival. So they really can't afford to give up at this point in time. And I think the challenge for the Israelis is how do they achieve military success quickly on both the southern front in Gaza against Hamas and the northern front in Lebanon against Hezbollah, as well as defeating threats from Iran, including potentially you know, preventing Iran from getting nuclear weapons. How do they do all that quickly? Because ultimately, you know, there could be a change of leadership in Washington. Kamala Harris, we don't know exactly where she stands on Israel. I think uh, Trump would be far more hawkish and supportive of Israel. We simply don't know what the situation will be four months from now, six months from now. Right. And one cannot but also talk about the situation in Lebanon as well. It looks like the situations are somehow going towards a similar situation in Gaza with the health infrastructures being damaged. Do you think we're also moving towards another Gaza Strip in Lebanon? Is it possible? I think that's, that's yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, on the cards. I think that, you know, Israel has done a ground incursion into southern Lebanon to push Hezbollah forces back to the Latani River. Uh, to try and create a buffer zone that then will allow Israeli citizens to move back to their towns and villages in northern Israel. But they're also undertaking ongoing strikes to uh, to reduce the threat posed by Hezbollah missile and rocket capabilities, which are massive. Um, but I think the greater risk, rather than Hezbollah and Lebanon, is the possibility that uh, the situation between Israel and Iran will spill out of control. We end up in a wider regional war as a result. Uh, and I think that that's a real risk in the coming weeks, that uh, Israel is going to clearly retaliate for that Iranian attack last mm. week. Uh, and then the Iranians would respond. And so you end up in this tit for tat escalatory cycle, which is very dangerous. Right. Of course, we were not expecting a one year anniversary, hoping to get a ceasefire deal, but it doesn't seem to be in sight. But thank you so much, Dr. Malcolm Davis, for joining us and giving your opinions. My pleasure.